What's up everybody, Mike here, talking about some recent news in the automotive world, and that is the death of Scion. And of course, when I checked my YouTube channel today, I found out that that dude in blue made a video on the subject as well. So I'm not trying to copy him here. I thought of this before he put out his video. I'm sure we thought of them about the same time. Um, but I watched it, I really enjoyed it, and uh, not surprisingly, uh, we had some of the same ideas, but I just kind of wanted to give my two cents on it because that's what I do. So Scion as a brand was always kind of this funny experiment. You know, Toyota really, in my opinion, looked at themselves and realized, wow, we have absolutely nothing fun and interesting to offer young buyers. So let's create a brand that's a little bit more youthful and energetic, whatever you want to call it. Now all of a sudden these young people are going to buy it. But in my opinion, you can't just do that. And especially like it, automotive enthusiasts, if you want to capture that market, it's very hard to do so because the only way to do it is with respect and credit. Like the people who are automotive enthusiasts, they have to like your brand because it does something good. They don't just like a brand because it's like youthful or because it's different. They like it because it's a good brand and they offer good cars. And you know, Scion could have been that company. They could have been. But instead it was all just rebranded Toyotas from like other places that they brought. And the only kind of unique and interesting Scion that was ever made was the XB. And uh, you know, it was a Cube. It was kind of one of the first of the Cube vehicles, but the Cubes are never a mass market vehicle. They never become super popular. You look at like the Nissan Cube, the other stuff, then you got kind of the Kia Soul. Um, but the Kia Soul didn't become super popular until it was a little bit restyled. So, you know, the whole Cube thing was quirky and somewhat interesting, I guess you would say. I mean, it was never my kind of thing. I think they're hideous, but um, at least it was actually different um, in that respect. But, you know, as far as the other the other parts of the brand are concerned, they offer nothing good at any time. And that was a huge problem, you know, because like I said, Scion could have been a brand that was like enthusiast cars. It could have been Toyota's enthusiast division. Now, my personal opinion on the whole thing is you don't do that. You don't create another brand just to sell different cars, just sell, especially Toyota. Like Toyota doesn't need to rebrand itself. Toyota doesn't need to, you know, have a different brand for enthusiast cars. If Toyota came out with a real car, like a, a new Supra, and you know, they would sell it because people have the respect of Toyota. They, you know, nowadays, Toyota's super boring, right? But we would still understand the fact that if Toyota made another Supra, people would be interested in it. And if it was a serious car, if it wasn't just some joke with a bunch of, you know, with a Supra badge put on it, which would be horrible, um, <laughs> that would be absolutely devastating to the Supra name if that would happen. But if it was a real car, people would respect it and people would buy it. But instead, what Scion did was basically the same kind of bullshit that, you know, GM did with Saturn and Oldsmobile over the last and Pontiac and, and over the last few years of its life. And even some Cadillacs are guilty of this, not so anymore, um, which I want to get to in a second because I think that's important to, uh, to point out. But, you know, just Buick and, uh, and other ones from Ford, like Mercury and even Lincoln to a huge degree, which in my opinion is their biggest problem. They're just taking branded, they're just taking cars from their normal brand, like taking Chevys and rebranding them as Buicks or whatever, and then trying to charge more for them. Or, or in Scion's case, they were actually charging less, I think, than the normal Toyota depending on what car you got, like the, the Toyota equivalent, um, but which they sold in other places, so you couldn't really know. But the whole thing is that you can't just rebrand cars and then all of a sudden like people are going to be interested in it. Everyone knows, especially, again, people that are younger, the people, the market that you're trying to capture, automotive enthusiasts, they're not stupid. They know if a car is just some rebranded piece of crap from somewhere else. You know, they know that. And you look at who Scion actually ended up selling cars to, and it was mostly old people. It wasn't even young people at all. The only one that kind of sold to some young people was the TC. And let's be honest, the only reason for that is because it was a cheap car to buy. Like there was nothing good performance wise about the TC. It looked decent, but performance wise, it was pathetic. And all around, it was just a completely pathetic car, in my opinion. And, um, you know, like I said, some young people did buy it. Ultimately, I think they bought it just because it was cheap. And uh, I'm sure if people are being honest, they would agree with that. Um, so the TC was kind of like their only somewhat successful car, in my opinion. And because of, like I said, I think just because it looked decent and it was cheap. Um, but, you know, you take a car then like the whole BRZ FRS thing, which I think was a huge misstep because, like that dude in blue was saying, the people would buy an FRS 
and then rebrand it as a Toyota. And that just shows you how much no one gives a shit about Scion at all. Like nobody, nobody wants to drive a Scion. Nobody wants to because it's horrible. It has no brand recognition. The, the name has no prestige. It has no respect. Nobody wants a Scion. I've never heard anybody in my life say like, I really want a Scion. So, you know, they lost a ton of sales to Subaru in that way because so many people would rather have the Subaru brand um, than the Scion brand. And then, of course, the people who did buy the Scion, a lot of them changed it over to Toyota GT86 badges. So the whole thing was a massive misstep, in my opinion. And like I said, you know, Scion could have been a good brand. And my, my thing is that when you take, like, Chevrolet and Cadillac, they, for instance, the new Camaro is on the same platform as the ATS. But they're very, very different cars. And I think... That's the only way to be successful. That's why I think Lincoln has been struggling. Um, you know, just now they're starting to get the idea that, hey, we need to kind of make our own cars a little bit more. But even so, with that Lincoln Continental concept that I saw at the auto show, the original Continental concept looked good, and then this one looks like a fusion again. And it's just like, stop doing this. Stop rebranding cars. Build, if you're gonna have a separate brand, build their own and make them look good. That's super important if you're gonna have like, if you're gonna have two different brands within a company, you have to make sure that they're very different from one another, in my opinion, and that was a huge problem with the whole Scion um, experiment. So that's why I'm pretty happy to see that Scion is finally dead, actually, if I'm being honest. I am happy about it, you know, because hopefully other manufacturers with worthless brands out there will look at this and be like, okay, let's kill off these brands. And the manufacturers that have brands that should be saved, maybe they can look at this and be like, okay, let's change some things up so that we don't suffer the same fate. And, you know, not that Toyota had to kill off Scion, because they really didn't. They could have kept going and whatever, but it was definitely the right call. I think it was definitely the right call to kill off that brand. And it gives me hope that this will open a new door for Toyota, because like we said earlier, they're definitely capable of creating a great car, a great sports car. You look at the call following that Super still have, ones that are in good condition are worth like 40, 50 grand. Uh, for the twin turbo so you know it, 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 there's still that huge falling behind it even still today and two years ago or whatever there was that uh, super concept it was called an mk something i believe or i don't know and it was like some talk about a joint operation between uh, Toyota and BMW with like a shared platform with the Z4. I'd love to see something like that. I know I'm not alone on that. You know, we're hoping for some news on something, but for now it looks like Toyota has kind of killed that project as well. You know, we haven't really heard anything about it. So um, to be totally honest, I'm not too hopeful about it, which is unfortunate too. You know, Toyota does the whole appliance car very well. They do boring very well. They're reliable and you can't knock them for that. That's every manufacturer's bread and butter doing boring well is important. But it would be cool to see some sports cars too, you know, to widen the brand, to create a, a kind of a newer image for Toyota. It would open some doors and uh, I don't know, I'd like to see it. And from a business standpoint, to be honest, they don't really need it. So that's why I don't think Toyota is super motivated to make uh, sports cars. They don't need it. That's not what they do. They do boring. So maybe someday we can remain hopeful that uh, someday they will bring back a proper sports car. But for now, Scion is dead and I'm happy about it. And I uh, wonder what everybody else thinks as well. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Always appreciate it. If you're stopping in for the first time, please subscribe and take care. Have a great day.